Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. This is Kelsey Gannett. If you don't know her, she is one of our podcast podcast team members. She has her own podcast on our um, website. She has uh, she talks about um, losing identity, and today she wants to talk about a very a very um, important topic and, and the loss of identity after a breakup. Now, you know, everybody goes through this at some point. So what happens after a breakup? You know, you know, who are you? You know, you're, what happens when your spouse and you start to disconnect and leave? You know, what becomes of you? You know, and today Kelsey's going to talk about that and she's going to give some really great advice about what go, what happens after a breakup and how you can regain your identity back, you know, after a breakup. So Kelsey, take it away and tell everybody a little about yourself and, you know, give them a little bit, uh, you know, info so we can get this going. And I want to hear all about this because this is something that everybody goes through at some point in their life. And sometimes a lot of people go through it more than once. So, you know, this is a great, great topic. And I, I love it. What's up, everybody? My name is Kelsey Gannett. I am the retired athlete coach. Um, I wanted to talk today about what happens after you break up with someone. So a little bit of context into my journey. Um, I was 23 and living in a completely different state from my whole family and completely, totally in love with the person that I was dating. Um, I thought we were going to get married. I thought everything was going to be sunshine and roses and everything was going to be exactly what I wanted. And then unfortunately, about six months before we broke up, my partner experienced a life altering trauma. And I spent about a month or two living in the ICU with him and making sure that he was able to recover and do all the things. And then about three months after that, we unfortunately decided to go our separate ways. So it was an incredibly overwhelming time for me, not only because I was losing um, my partner, but I was also, I felt like losing myself. So during the time that I was caretaking for my partner, I felt, you know, all of my needs had kind of gone to the wayside. I stopped really prioritizing any of my normal routine or anything else that we needed. And so when he decided that we were no longer together, I felt this immediate sense of extreme loss because I was so frustrated because I had done all of this work to help him recover. I had reinvented my whole life. I had moved myself to a different state. I had done everything that I felt like, you know, was quote unquote, like right in the relationship. And then when he decided we weren't going to be together, I lost it. Um, I had a lot of really, really big feelings about it. And a lot of them were anger. And I realize now looking back, it wasn't really, I wasn't really angry at him. I was really angry at myself for allowing myself to get so far and so deeply ingrained in his health, wealth, and well-being that I really didn't think about myself at all. And so when we transitioned and broke up, I, we were cohabiting. So we had to, you know, I had to find a different place. I had to go to different places. And not only that, but we also worked together. So that became a whole slew and a whole mess of just trying to understand how I could, you know, feel all these big feelings, but also still be professional, but also still really exist within the timeline of understanding that he and I, you know, we were on the same timeline, the same track. And then the next day, we were on completely separate timelines. So that's kind of what I wanted to chat about in today's episodes and kind of get any, you know, insight out to listeners and kind of give them a, I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, and maybe we'll be there again. I am happily married, but, you know, it did take me a lot of time to really understand who I was without this person and why I had made those decisions, you know. I think, you know, when we come out of a breakup, we think so much and so badly about the other person that it's hard for us to kind of self-reflect because we do need that human moment where we're really mad and that's completely human and fine. But I think once I kind of was able to move out of that space of anger, it became such a place of reflection and a genuine gift of really saying, okay, you know, this is not the person that I wanted to be. I never wanted to do 
you know, all of these things that I've done in order to prioritize this person's health. And now I need to make sure I don't make those same mistakes again. So, you know, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's really hard when you go through a breakup, there are so many different emotions at, that go on. And so many people, you know, when we come out of breakups, we're, we're so hurt emotionally mm -hmm. And it, and it, it's hard, you know, it, it's like open wounds. And a lot of times it leaves a lot of scar tissue damage too, you know, and, you know, when you've been with someone for so long and you've developed this lifestyle, you know, and then all of a sudden you break up, you're starting from scratch again, basically. And that's hard. You know, you're, you know, you need to really start your life all over again. And, you know, emotionally, that's, that's very overwhelming, stressfully. And then you have to figure out, okay, you know, I came from this relationship, it didn't work out the way we planned. Now I, I have to move on. But I've been so used to being in this relationship, act in a certain way, being dependent on this and used to this, you know, these certain routines. Now I got to create a whole new me, a whole new life, you know, and, and then, you know, trying to find a place or trying to, you know, there's so many things to consider, you know, how did you break it up where you were able to like, you know, healthy wise, be able to like step-by-step step get to that point where, you know, you started to rebuild because that's really overwhelming. And at the same time, you're no longer, you know, you know, a couple. So who mm -hmm. are you? You know, yeah. so there's a lot of things here mm -hmm. to discuss that, you know, a lot of people go through. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I did was I allowed myself to be, be as messy as I wanted to. And I know that's probably not the advice that everyone wants to hear. Um, I, I knew the value that I brought to my relationship. You know, I knew the sacrifices that I made in order to make sure that this person was happy, healthy, and fed and doing all these things. And so I allowed myself to be angry. And probably for the first time in a long time in my life at that time, I allowed myself to be mad um, to the point where, you know, I was writing angry letters. I was, you know, I was sending angry texts. That's not something I would advise. <laughs> but, <laughs> but sometimes um, I always say I am to my core. I'm a little bit of a petty person and I know that about myself and it's something yeah. I reflect on a lot. And I allowed myself to be like a little bit petty in both my letters and my angry text messages and all of that stuff, but I didn't allow myself to stay there. And so I think that's the big distinctive thing. Um, yeah. I allowed myself to be angry and I was like, I'm going to just let myself be angry and all this stuff. But there was a certain point about like two or three months later where I kind of said, okay, I need to step out of this place. This isn't healthy. You know, they always say, you know, being angry is like drinking poison to hurt somebody else, but you're drinking your own poison. Yeah. And I definitely felt that like I could feel it in my soul. I could feel it in my body. I could feel it throughout all these things. And so I really, once I had allowed myself to move through that anger, I then had that reflective question of like, oh my God, who am I now? Because you know, I had just retired from softball. I had gone through an identity crisis with that. I had really tried hard to define myself around my partner. So I pivoted. Instead of looking inward, I looked outward and I defined myself around our relationship, he and I. And then when that relationship was no longer a thing, it was a secondary moment of really saying, okay, this is a really unique opportunity that I get to say, like, this is what I want to do. And so right. at that point, about three months later, when I kind of processed through the anger, I sat down with my journal and I wrote out the ideal partner. And I said, you know, he's going to look like this. He's going to do these things. He's going to do all this stuff. Like this is everything. And I just like remember sitting and really like picturing this person. And it was the trippiest thing ever about six months later when I would meet my now husband getting off a bus at the camp that I worked at. And he met all of those requirements. He looked how I said I wanted to look. He, he talked how I wanted to look. Like it was the wildest thing that I've ever kind of thought about. And yeah. you can call it whatever you want, like manifesting prayers, anything else. But I really think the universe and everyone noticed how I had taken the six months to really reflect and say like, 
okay, so now I'm this person. I do these things. I go to the gym. I go to therapy. I, you know, am interested in going to um, travel and do all these things. I, instead of we. And I think that, you know, that was a moment where it was really, really unique. And I did get the benefits and I did get that immediate kind of feedback, you know, a six months turnaround for really sitting down and reflecting. That's really short. So I think it was really cool. But in addition to writing all of those stuff, that stuff down, every time I was angry, I stopped texting. I blocked every, I blocked everybody in my life that was close to this person. I stopped, you know, my friends at the time were all, we were all, we shared friends. And so I had to basically sit down and say like, I don't want you to pick sides. I don't want you to say like, oh, I can't hang out with her because I I hung out with him earlier in the day. I said like, I don't want that. I just want him to not be a topic of our conversations because I need, I need some separation of some church and state. Like I need a little bit of all of this stuff. And so, you know, along with like, right. Every time I was angry, I would write it down Mm -hmm. and I would just, I would burn the paper and I would say, okay, we're good. And a lot of times it was a reoccurring theme. Like I was just so frustrated that I didn't get the benefits of the investment that I had. Right. And we'll be frank and honest. And I've been there and done that thing. So, you know, it's just, it was really a time for me to reflect. And it was such a gift to reflect and have the environment that I did where I was able to just sit in it. And I don't think a lot of people are able to, because, you know, maybe they're working so much or doing everything else. At this time, I had a part-time job and was also going to school. So I had a little bit of a benefit, but, you know, it was this moment of just like, okay, so how can I fix me? How can it be me instead of we? And I kept writing that in my journal over and over again, me versus we. And so now I'm I am interested in reading. I'm interested in going to the gym and all that stuff. And so that separation, just the from I to we, was such a big flip. And so that was really, really important to me to kind of bring in. I think that's so important because, you know, you you took some time out to give yourself a little self-love and a lot of people don't do that. They, you know, they, they mourn and they, they focus on, on the breakup, but then they don't take time out to take a step back and, and fill their body and fill their mind with what it really needs. And the fact that you could, you were able to like, let go of the we and make it I, 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 that's not being selfish. Some people feel guilty or they feel shameful to do that, but it's not, it's healthy because how can you move on and become a better person, find your identity and start creating a new life for yourself. If you don't take time out to give yourself a little self-love and figure out who you really are as a person. Yeah. That was so important to me taking that time and just saying like, all right, like, what do I like? What do I not like? What did I, what did I do? Because then oftentimes in relationships, we always do this, right? Like, yeah. what did I do? Because he was interested in it, but I really had absolutely no interest in. And I would like go to the point where I would like write it down. And I'd be like, God, like 75% of the things we used to do were all things that he wanted to do. And, you know, like, what would I fill my time with 75% of what we did? And so like, that was a really, really interesting thing. The other thing I also did was like, I needed to travel. That was something that like really helped me kind of put my um, anxiety at rest, but also kind of having something to look forward to. So I started scheduling like trips to go see my friends and really low cost things. But like, yeah, I was just trying to connect with people that weren't enmeshed within the environment that I was and seeing other people's perspectives because they weren't, you know, there every day, they weren't able to see all this stuff. It was really important for me. And so, you know, that the community of pulling people in and being like, Hey, I need a little bit of help or, Hey, I just want to come visit because I need some time. And like, yeah, people were amazing and able to do that. And so I also really asked for help. I was also really articulate and being like, I need like a weekend away from this town because everybody here knows me and everybody here knows him. And like, it's just, it's too much. Let me get out of here. So that was really important as well. And I I think it's it's great that you were able to like, really write down your interests, write down, figure out who you are as a person 
and then, you know, and, and then take time out for yourself. And, and, you know, it's, you know, so many people, I think one of the biggest problems that I see is that so many people are doing everything for their partner. Mm -hmm. And they do so much for their partner that they're not doing anything for themselves and they yeah. lose sight of who they are. You know, it's like, you know, they, they've been do, do, pleasing their spouse or pleasing their partner the whole entire time. And then, you know, if you say to them, who are you as a person, you know? if they really thought about it, I guarantee you so many people didn't know how to answer me because the whole time they were pleasing that other person, they never took time out to find out who the real person was, who they are, you know, mm -hmm. what they really like, what they really want in life, you know, because they were always trying to please the other person. And then, you know, and then if people, if kids came in, in the picture or grandkids came in the picture, it was about the, the partner. Then it was about the kids. Then it was about the grandkids. And, mm -hmm. and if you took all that away, who are you? They couldn't answer you because that's what they centered their whole life around. But how much, you know, if you don't know who you are as a person, how much inner happiness can you, you could be? You, you know, you don't, you're living a life to please others, but you really, you're not going to be happy inside because you really, you have to really focus on who you are. Take time out to you know, know your identity and know who you are and, and manifest in that. Because once you, you feel good about yourself and you know who you are as a person, you really start to shine. And then people, people notice that. And I think that also boosts your self-esteem up. It makes you a better person. And you still could love your, your, your partner. You still could have a healthy, you know, family, but you know, you really have to know who you are as a person because that, that's the, the, the foundation of you, you know, you're not here to, to, be a pleaser and, and to consistently, you know, you know, do what your other, the other person in your life wants you to do. You have to do what you want to do also. It's not mm -hmm. fair, you know? Yeah. hundred percent. I, uh, that is literally my, my core and that's my whole, you know, my whole idea about relationships with anything. And I think it, I see it quite a bit with, you know, not only people who are going through a breakup, but mothers who are new mothers. I have a lot of friends that are new mothers and they are experiencing and just watching themselves, you know, prioritize this person, the baby over everything. And yes, that is a hundred percent valid. And, you know, those babies needs need to be met, but they don't take the time and I'm not seeing them take the time to kind of have some separation or have anything else. And so, you know, I'm always that friend and I don't have any children of my own yet, but I'm always that friend that's like, Hey, like, do you want to go out and do you want to do anything? Like I'll take the baby, you know, all this stuff. And so I think, you know, the relationship and the identity crisis that comes with it, it's so multi-layered and it applies across every relationship we have. You know, there are many people who went home for the holidays and they hung out with their family members who haven't seen them since the last holidays. And they've suddenly got to reintroduce themselves and be like, yeah, so I don't really, I don't work at that place anymore. I don't do those things or anything like that. Like, this is what I'm really interested in now. And so those relationships, in addition to like, you know, breakups and being a parent, those relationships also require so much maintenance when you're doing and exploring identity. And I think that's something that's really been very interesting for me to kind of reflect on as someone who does what I do with dealing with people who work with, through identity crisis is how you communicate those interests and how you communicate who you are, it really depends on the relationships you have. And those relationships can both add and hinder to those things. And so I think that's a really interesting point that you brought up as well. And I think something else that I was thinking about when you were talking right now, you're talking about relationships, is that when you're so involved in let's say work or other things that are going on in your life and you have a relationship going on but you're not you're not communicating you're not bonding because you're you're doing your thing and the other person's doing their thing and it might be work and it might be other commitments that you've made you know you could easily slowly start to drift apart and lose mm -hmm. sight of who the other person is you think you know who the other person is but over time especially if you start to like start to focus on other things and you don't focus on each other you change as a person and then the other person doesn't know realize who that person is they think mm -hmm. they do but then that like those interests those common denominators are now different 
and you start to separate because you're no longer those people that you were when you first met. How do you Yeah, I definitely that? see that too. I definitely see that too. And both my experience and just watching, uh, you know, many people that are throughout this, uh, throughout this journey, you know, I worked with a client that had, um, was a caregiver for her, uh, mother who was struggling with mental illness. And she repeatedly had to like, basically almost reintroduce herself to her mother and be like, Hey, like, you know, this time, like, I haven't seen you in three months, but like, here's what's new. I quit my job and now I'm doing this or I'm volunteering or anything else. And the maintenance of doing that and constantly being like, Hey, like, you know, I don't really like that anymore. I changed my hair or I did this or any of that. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, especially with both romantic and familial relationships, we always have to communicate so explicitly on who we are and what we kind of stand for that it kind of almost becomes exhausting. You know, later in life, now that I'm older, I've become like, I only have a couple friends and I realized that the reason is because of the maintenance of this as mm -hmm. I'm, you know, expanding, as I am, you know, exploring different business opportunities, as I'm moving away from the person that I was when I was, you know, in college, high school, or even younger, I'm expanding. And so it's hard to communicate and maintain that maintenance of yeah. constantly being like, so I was really interested last year in crocheting, but this year I really don't like that. I've realized that, you know, it hurts my hand and that's not really what I'm into, which yeah. I love crocheting, by the way, never, mm -hmm. never bashing crocheting. <laughs> but like, um, I think it's just, you know, that maintenance and all of that and coming together and that explicit communication with those relationships, whether it's, you know, romantic, familial or anything else, it's really, really important. And how you do that is entirely your choice. I know yeah. for me, when I, you know, was dealing with people who knew me through my ex, I was constantly saying to them, like, please don't feel like you need to report back to him. Please don't mm -hmm. feel like you need to tell me anything about him. I know he's fine. I'm good. Like, I know he's good. And we're going to get through this. Like, everything's okay. And so yeah. I think, you know, when you kind of have to do that, that is adds a layer of exhaustion to the identity crisis that like a lot of people don't acknowledge. And so yeah. I'm super excited that you brought it up because, you know, I think a lot of people just like assume one day you wake up and you're like, I'm going to be a whole new person and I'm going to do all these new things and I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. and I'm going to do all this stuff. When in reality, those are really, really small bite-sized changes that if you're not constantly in communication with someone about being like, hey, like, I'm going to start waking up at 5 a.m. and do a wonderful um, like hypnotherapy thing. That doesn't, you know, that always is so hard when you have somebody who pops in and you don't have that type of explicit, constant communication. And so I think that's a really, really interesting point. Yeah. You know, it, a lot of times too, is like we, we change over time, mm -hmm. you know, and I noticed even as I got older, you know, things that re I really like to do or the way I approach things, even the way I talked, you know, was different as I got older, you know, I was more laid back and passive. And as I got older, I voiced my opinion more and, you know, and things that I used to like to do, my interests changed. And so I had, like you were mentioning before, now you only have a handful of friends. You know, I had a large group of friends, but we started, you know, me personally, I started changing. And mm -hmm. so then you, you you have less things in common with a lot of people and that's okay. You know, you know, people sometimes are meant to be in your life for a certain period of time and then you move on. And that's what people have to realize. Don't take it to heart. Don't, you know, don't beat yourself up over the head over it because, you know, Sometimes people are just meant to be in your life for just a certain period. You learn from each other, you grow, and then you move on. And it's okay. It's a normal part of life. Mm -hmm. Just because you're with someone doesn't mean that you have to be with that person the rest of your life. If you do break up or the relationship ends, you know, it's you, you need to move on, heal those wounds, you know, get, get over those angry emotions like you were saying. Mm -hmm. And then focus on the future, you know, and, and I think just focusing on the present to heal yourself and then mm -hmm. creating you know, an idea of who you are and then mm -hmm. thinking about where do I want to go in life? Like you said, you made a list of what kind of guy you wanted to be with. Mm -hmm. And that's so funny because after my big breakup, 
I created a list in my head of the perfect guy that I wanted to be with. And I ended up when I got married, he fit all the qualifications of that make-believe person I put in my head, you know, and it's like, sometimes it is like the universe just listens and, you know, mm -hmm. And, some, you know, I always say, ask the universe and the universe shall answer. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, it's like what you put out there, you know, and you have to really think about what you really want. Who's that person in your life that you really want to be with, you know, and don't always like settle because I see so many people, you know, they don't think they're worthy enough and they just settle, you know, don't settle. What type of person would you love to be with? And that's why it's so important to connect with your identity, because once you know who you are, you know exactly what you want. You'll know exactly what kind of guy you want or girl you want. You'll know exactly what you want from life. It's, it's figuring out who you are as a person, figuring out that identity, I think. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, uh, sitting with that person and being the person that's also changed so much. It sounds, it may sound to, you know, anybody who's listening, like we're just saying like, oh, just sit down and write, write things down and you'll be fine. Yeah. And that's totally not, you know, that's totally not the message. And I think for me, it's just sitting with yourself and having those really like ooh, uncomfortable, like conversations where you're like, yeah. oh gosh, like, I don't really want to go hang out with that friend because I know that they are, you know, going to talk to me about things that happened three years ago. And like, it doesn't really matter to me anymore and all that yeah. stuff. And so I think, you know, start when you're thinking about redefining your identity after a friendship has come to an end, a romantic relationship, or even a family relationship has come to an end. I think starting where it feels the most a little bit uncomfortable to the point where you feel like, oh, like, how is this going to work? And having those moments of complete clarity, like, absolutely not. This is not my, this is not what I want. You know, yeah. every, a lot of people in my life last year said to me, if it's not a heck yes, it's a heck no. And I kind yes. of think that that really applies yeah. to, you know, when we are talking about relationships and when we're talking about redefining and understanding that identity crisis that can come after that is, you know, okay, things have changed and what's a heck yes and what's a heck no. So I think right. moving forward, as you are navigating whatever, you know, identity crisis you may be as um, you're redefining yourself after a relationship has come to an end, really take those words into mind. You know, if it's not yeah. a heck yes, it's a heck no. And yeah. you may be really confused about what a heck no feels like. Because you, <laughs> you may honestly just have been saying heck no to everything and being like, yeah, and so that might be something that, you know, when we talk about settling, I think that's something that really stuck out to me is oftentimes in my previous relationship, I was doing a lot of stuff that felt like heck no. And I was like, sure, it'll be great. I would yeah. love to do that. I'd love to, you know, drive seven hours to go to a football game when I had absolutely no interest in it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that that's really important as we forward and you really are trying to process through that so I think it's a really really cool topic that we brought up and kind of have been chatting about and I'm really excited to see what people think of this yeah so am I because I, I really think that people have to you know really figure out who they are and you know when a, when a relationship you know comes to an end you know you have to really think about, you know, okay, this relationship has come to an end, but then look at who you are as a person and what you really want. Because so many times I've done that too, especially I think as we were younger too, some people continue mm -hmm. to do it the rest of their lives, but it's like, yeah, I'll do that, you know, and you really don't want to, you know, you have to really be able to, you know, break through that fear of, of speaking your mind, because it's mm -hmm. so important to voice who you are as a person and let people know, because you know, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? If a person doesn't like who you are, they're not going to be with you. But if, a, you know, but if you don't let that person know who you are, they, they're not going to be able to know if you're the right person and vice versa. You know, it's, it's, it, you don't want to be with, with people that, you know, are, are not similar to you with the same interests. And if you keep saying, yeah, I'll do that or okay, you know, I like that too. And you really don't like it, but you're trying to, you know, just be the, the laid back person who, you know, try and make everything, everybody happy. The, the one thing that is not, the one person that's not happy is you. 
Mm-hmm. So really, where is that going? You know, uh, you know, you could have lots of friends, but and you could have and you could be in relationships and you can have family members and you can you can be interacting with them. But if you're not showing them who you are as a person, you know, you don't really know if you're the right fit, you know, mm-hmm. with that, you know, and sometimes when you're not the right fit, you either have to break it off or just keep your distance or let them know who you are and let them decide if they want to be with you or, or, in, and it might even, you might even stay in the relationship, but the relationship might change. There might be alterations and, you know, you might not, it might feel awkward at first because you're not, you know, you're, you're not, it's not the same relationship you're used to, but sometimes you can save relationships, you know, like family members or friends, you know, and sometimes it's just, you realize that you're become so different that, it's time to move on and that's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's totally my philosophy as well. You know, you can totally meet someone in the middle that's willing to meet in the middle, but there's also times where I think a break or, you know, taking time away is a hundred percent, you know, valid and real. And I know many people, um, I've had several friends that I've had, you know, not friendship breakups in the sense, like, you know, I told them like, absolutely not. I'll never speak to you again, but friends that I've, that I've kind of fallen off. And then, you know, years later, I will reconnect with them, you know, have the maintenance conversation of like, Hey, you know, this is what I'm doing now. This is all this stuff. But, um, you know, I think it's such a cool opportunity to have those really frank and really cool conversations and say like, I don't really like that anymore, or I don't, I'm not dating that person anymore because of this and that. And like, I think that's a really, really unique opportunity to find your people. And that's a hundred percent what happened with me where, you know, I basically felt like I was at ground zero. You know, I had my friends that my forever friends, but all of the people that I had around me were people that I'd known for three, four years and had fallen completely out of contact with because I had, you know, broken up with my ex. So I think yeah. it's a really, really fun opportunity to kind of start from the bottom. And I think, you know, it's it's hard because I'm talking about this like with a big smile on my face and saying, what a blessing, what an opportunity, what all this stuff. But I also remember and understand how it feels to be on the other side and to feel like, oh my gosh, why is this happening to me? And I yeah. think that's you know, I think that's one of the beauties of being able to have such a reflection and an understanding of identity crises is to be able to understand the really unique opportunity that's presented to you, you know, being able to say like, all right, well, now I need to connect with all new people because I can't connect with the people that I had with before. Sounds incredibly daunting, but when you also look at it, at it, at the other side of it, it sounds so cool because who you know, many people get the opportunity to redefine themselves, but not many people get the opportunity to redefine their friends and their relationships and say, oh my gosh, like now I have the coolest people that I've called into, you know, my world. And yeah, I start, I've started from ground, like from nothing with many friendships and have created incredible uh, like communities of people that have stuck with me and done everything else. And I know eventually maybe it will come to the time where those people shift and change, but I'm so grateful for the opportunity to get to know these people. And I wouldn't have known them if I had, you know, stayed in that relationship or stayed with that friendship or anything else. So keep that in mind as you're navigating through this identity crisis and whatever kind of relationship breakup you're going through. I think you made it like such a great point. You know, a lot of times we look at it as, you know, oh my God, I can't do this. You know, it's, it's, it's too scary. You know, you know, I don't, you know, how will I, how will I get through it? You know, or especially like later on in life, sometimes when you get older, you get so used to being in a certain, you know, scenario that you're like, oh my God, I can't do it. I'm too old and da, 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 da. But you know, no matter what age you are, it's okay. You know, don't look at it as a negative thing. Like, oh my God, it's a breakup. You know, it's, you know, think of it, like you said, like a new beginning, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, one relationship didn't work. You changed the other person changed, 
you know, you're not meant to be together anymore and that's okay. You know, you become two different people and, you know, as time went on, you just separated and became your own people. And now you don't have that same bond or that same love or that same connection, but now you have the opportunity to go out there and build a whole new life for yourself, a life that will make you happier. And then you can meet the people or the person in your life that's going to really bring you that true happiness that you deserve. Because I think that's mm -hmm. the thing. People need to realize that they deserve to be happy. Mm -hmm. Don't settle. You know, there's no yeah. reason to settle. Yeah. Be happy. You know, we have, you know, supposedly we have one life on this planet that I know of. Let's make it the most of it. And if, if you're in a relationship and you're not happy and it's not working and you see the separation, you see the changes, you're no longer with have the same interests, maybe it's time to just, you know, to to get that courage to to move on. Because even mm -hmm. though it's going to be very hurtful, you're going to go through a lot of anger, you know, frustration, maybe depression, you know, but learn how to get out of it, you know, in a positive way and figure and focus on your new beginning. Focus on those positive things that can enter your life and how you can make such a new, beautiful life for yourself. And, you know, and that might help give you the strength to, you know, to want to move forward, I think. Yeah, I love that. That's a hundred, that's my entire mentality when it comes to a new relationship and a new identity, because, you know, I spent I spent two years of my life feeling like, oh my God, this is too hard. This is too anything. And how do I do this? And how do I start? And what do I do? And it was what I felt, you know, messy and all this stuff. And I would didn't want yeah. it to be messy. I wanted it to be like, I go from step one to step two to step three. And that's really not how it kind of worked for me. I did step one and 20 at the same time and then came down to st do step five and then did step 30 and all those things. And so I think that that's, you know, it's a really unique opportunity to never settle because yeah. I think, you know, I myself am never going to settle for myself. I think I'm always going to be the person that's going to evolve, that's going to push, that's going to say like, okay, so I did that. Like, I want to, I hate using the words level up, but I want to like really figure out what yeah. my next steps are and how I continue to explore this you know, where we are. And yeah. I think that that's a really unique opportunity to just be able to sit and say, like, I've noticed this, I've really, you know, reflected on this. And I do want to either, you know, I don't want to settle. And I, this is how I not settle. I not settle by, you know, prioritizing myself, making sure I don't lose myself along the way. And, you know, taking those moments of reflection is so incredibly important. So I love that you brought that up. And I think it's okay too to like, you know, go and have a coach to talk to or mm -hmm. have a therapist to talk to because, yeah. you know, there was a point in my life, so many things happened, so many changes occurred and I, I lost my identity for a while and I, I you know, I, I wasn't sure who I was anymore, you know, and, um, you know, it took time and, you know, and when I was, you know, talking to somebody, you know, a lot of repressed emotions came up that I didn't mm -hmm. even know I had, you know, but once I was able to connect with those emotions and I was able to heal those emotions, you know, I was able to figure out who I was again and what I really wanted in mm -hmm. life and what, you know, direction I needed to head in. And, you know, it's, it's okay to reach out for support. It's so, yeah. you know, and I, I always suggest reaching out to like a coach or a therapist because you get an unbiased opinion because sometimes it's very hard to talk to your friends and family because they have their own opinions and they think they know you, but sometimes they don't. And then sometimes it's nice to just get someone who's out of the box, who doesn't know you and mm -hmm. is just listening to you and can kind of guide you along the way. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree with that as well. You know, when I uh, broke up with my ex, my whole family thought, you know, one thing and they thought that I was going to be X, Y, and Z and I was going to react to this this way and all this stuff. And I did not react any way that they thought. And so they were kind of taken aback by that. And it became really hard to communicate with them because they always assumed that they knew the the end answer or what I was going to say. Or I would call them up and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated. He did this. And they'd be like, oh, he did and like before I could even say what he did, they would assume they knew. Yeah. And so it became a really, really hard conversation because, you know, you're going to family and friends asking for you know, 
I just want to talk. I just want to talk. And that's ultimately not what our friends and family are for. And so, you know, moving to a coach and a therapist, I did the same thing. I did both a coach and a therapist. Mm -hmm. And it was so freeing to be able to be like, here's the story. Here's the context. Here's all this stuff. And for them to be able to be like, oh, well, you know, how do you feel about that? And that was like completely a different conversation than what I was having with my friends and family at the time. So, you know, I totally agree. That is definitely something I would be a hundred percent behind as well. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's so beneficial when you have someone to talk to and someone that could help you, you know, get those repressed emotions out. Now, if you had to really think about everything we talked about today, are there some takeaways and some advice you'd like to give our audience? Because we talked about a lot of great things about breakups and, and finding your identity after a breakup and, and really learn how to move forward in life and, and make sure we don't get stuck, you know, Mm -hmm. and getting over those, those negative emotions, healing those negative emotions, and then learn how to move forward. And you gave a lot of great advice and answers to all those questions. So if you had to really sum up today's conversation, is there certain takeaways you'd like the audience to remember that you feel is really important? Yeah, I think anyone who's going through a breakup needs to acknowledge that they're also going through an identity crisis. So Mm -hmm. in my line of work, I call this an energetic death, which is the end of an experience. And this is the grief you feel after an experience has come to an end. So while you're really, really mourning the relationship that you had with the person, there's a secondary thing that we often don't talk about, which is energetic death. And that's the energetic death of your identity that was based on being with this person. And so when we acknowledge that, And we're able to put a label on it and kind of, you know, quote unquote, diagnose it. I'm not a doctor by any means. Don't take my, don't take my medical advice. Okay. (laughs) But But when we're able to say, you know, this is an energetic death, I'm experienced, I'm grieving the experience of being with this person and all this stuff. It then makes it kind of a much more contextualized conversation. So we're able to kind of, once we're able to label something, It sounds really silly, but it does really make it uh, really beneficial for us. And so when we acknowledge that we're going through an identity crisis or an energetic death and, you know, we're mourning and grieving the relationship that we were in, there's many different things that will come up for you. And if I could tell you anything, if I could go back and talk to that person that was going through the breakup that I spoke about on this call, all I would say is that all feelings are valid. And the only thing that I would say to myself, because I did allow myself to get a little stuck, is that Mm -hmm. you can't stay in those feelings forever. And so you have to make the small choices of saying like, okay, I was really angry for a really long time. This has been a long time. I need to kind of move past this. And having that reflection piece is really hard, but it's really important. So if you can give yourself any grace to feel all the feels, but to not stay there forever, it's really important to do that. And so those would be just my quick takeaways for anyone who's going through um, processing their identity crisis after a relationship has come to an end. Yeah. Because, you know, it's really important that we talk about this stuff and really important that we normalize, you know, grieving the person we were with that person and also grieving that relationship. And so that grief is multi-layered It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months, it could be years. And, you know, I think the other thing that I would also say is that I don't ever feel like I'm healed, quote unquote, right? Like I I use air quotes when it comes to that. I feel, you know, I feel sadness for the relationship that came to an end many times often. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important that we acknowledge that there's never going to be like a finish line on this, right? There's never a finish line on any form of grief we have when we talk about experiences because our experiences are lived and they stay with us until we, you know, are no longer here. And so those experiences are going to pop up, Um, you know, times where you talk about them are going to pop up, but the distance between the feelings that you feel immediately after a relationship comes to an end and you have that identity crisis and where you are, you know, in a year is really great. And so, you know, it hurts, but you're able to put some distance between that pain and you're able to process as you go. And so it's really important that we kind of acknowledge that it will take some time, but this is not forever. And, you know, you have the power to make it not forever, regardless of 
any of the experiences that are coming to an end. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah. That, those are great. Those are great takeaways, you know, and, and it's so true. And, you know, I, I love that you, you mentioned all these different, you know, great uh, techniques that people could apply to their lives to, to help them get through a breakup, you know, and to find your identity after a breakup, because your whole life changes after a breakup. And, you know, whether it's with a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a partner or a family member or a friend, when you go through something, and it's very emotional when you go through mm -hmm. any type of breakup and it's learning how to cope with those feelings that you're going through, not get stuck and learn how to move ahead. And I think, like we said, focus on the positive, which is you're, you're starting a new beginning, whether it's a relationship or whether it's a, a friendship with somebody, or just like, you know, we said a family member, you know, things will change and focus on what's next, you know, you know, and it's okay, I think, too, to, to separate yourself from people, you know, sometimes you have to separate yourself from people for a while. Sometimes it could be a short period, but sometimes and sometimes it could be permanent. But sometimes, you know, people aren't always meant to be in our lives or not as frequent, you know, and mm -hmm. that's okay, too. And, you know, I think, I think what you brought up is great. Now, if people, um, can you tell people about the different services that you have and where they can contact you? Yeah. So uh, if you want to find me on both Instagram or TikTok, my username is the retired athlete coach. Um, I also have a website, which is called the energetic death .com, Um, and I do blogs, long form content on both TikTok and, um, my website. Sorry. I forgot the word for website. Uh -huh. Don't tell anyone. Um, and my services. So in probably February, I'm opening up one-on-one coaching for anyone who's experiencing an, an identity crisis, um, that it can be found at the, the energetic death .com. There's a live link button that will take you to a 30 minute consultation call with me. We'll talk kind of about what, um, grief you're experiencing, what identity crisis you may be experiencing and what coaching looks like for me. I am a teacher, a trained teacher. So my, uh, coaching always comes with a little bit of homework a lot of journaling and uh, a lot of discussions with me about the grief you may be experiencing because I want to hold space for all the people who have gone through the things that I've gone through and give context to people with my experiences. You know, I am relatively young, but I've lived a lot of different lives and I have a lot of things that I can bring and value to everything. So those are the three places you can find me, the retired athlete, um, athlete coach, on both uh, TikTok and Instagram and the energeticdeathcoach.com on my website. And I'd love to see you guys there. Thank you so much, Kelsey. This has been an amazing podcast. I, I love that you you brought this up because, you know, especially now because we're, we're recording this and it's almost Valentine's Day shortly, mm -hmm. you know, it's coming, it's around the block. You know, people are going to go through different emotions when it comes to love. They're going to think about people in their lives. And, you know, sometimes the old hurt, can come back and, you know, haunt us. And, and uh, we have to learn, you know, um, if people are in our lives that used to be in our lives, it's okay. Because like we had mentioned, sometimes it's just meant to be, you know, and if, if something, if a, it happens where a breakup occurs, then obviously there was a reason for it. And, you know, it's better to be in a healthy relationship than to be staggering in an unhealthy relationship, which many people do. They just don't want to let go or they feel codependent and they just don't want to let go. And it's okay to let go. Sometimes it's better. So it's like, you know, my, my last word before we go is focus on the positive. If you go through a breakup, focus on your new beginning, focus on finding that better life, that better you figure out who you are, you know, now one part of your life is gone and figure out who you are today, who you want to be and where do you want to be in the next six months, 12 months, a year from now, two years from now, whatever the case may be, but figure out who you are as a person. Cause once you figure out who you are as a person, just like Kelsey was saying, your whole life will change. You, you will have such a, a strong, resilient personality with a high self-esteem and you will know exactly what you want from life, but never self doubt yourself. I feel, you know, so that's the one thing we all tend to do. We're all victims of it. We sometimes tend to self doubt ourselves. find your identity, 
believe in yourself and go for it, I think. But Kelsey, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Kelsey is going to be back because she does have her own podcast with us. And she was going to talk about in our next episode, she wants to talk about caretaking and caring for others and how sometimes when we care for others, we could lose our own identity because we focus so much on the other person. So in our look out for her next podcast because she's going to really be touching a lot of important topics because in life we tend to care for others, you know, and we go through, you know, a lot of people are caretakers and a lot of people, you know, spend time caring for others. And sometimes we lose our identity and we lose who we are because we focus so much on the other person. So I can't wait till you come back and you start talking about that and hear all the great advice you have to share. So thank you so much, Kelsey. I'm going to be looking out for that podcast when you come back on the show, because I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. Everybody keep your eyes open because Kelsey's going to be back soon. And she's going to be telling us all about different ways to find your identity after you've cared for someone for so long and you stop focusing on yourself. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. You have a great day. You too.